Hi, this is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this is a quick video on this statement, fix organs by eating organs. Now, we already know that plants are important and there's herbs, so don't stop eating plants and herbs. Um, but naturally, um, our bodies need protein and the nutrients that come from um, animals to repair our protein and to repair our, our organs. So this is just the way it is with Mother Nature and there's no getting around that. So most of the time when I see a vegan or a very, very strict vegetarian, um, they need help with their health. And I've worked with them for a number of years and they only get a, per a certain percentage better, maybe 30 or 40% better. They never make it to 100% better because they're deficient in certain fats and proteins that their body needs. And taking some soy protein or powder protein that just it doesn't cut it. It only it only makes it you only make it so far. So in the science of working with supplements, capsules, tablets, there's two kind of broad categories. One is taking the organ and drying it and then making a tablet or a capsule out of that. So that'd be called a glandular. It's the whole organ and the cells intact as they are. So cytosol would be a term to describe that um, viewpoint or approach. Glandular is another term to describe that. Okay, now the second part would be not like the whole organ or all the cell material, but only the DNA parts. So the, there is the ability to extract DNA um, or actually like make the other parts fall away like the cell wall and the nutrients, uh, I'm sorry, the components of the cell. Make those go away and you're left with the DNA parts. So there's two terms to describe that aspect of the science. One is protomorphogenic. I'm sorry, protomorphology or protomorphogens, which I'll get to in a second. And then oral tolerization. So protomorphogens, that's in the natural world, and that's actually discovered by a guy named Royal Lee in the 1930s, and then he started our favorite supplement company called Standard Process. And um, oral tolerization is the medical term. You can Google that and find a lot of uh, research on that, and drug companies are working with that. Now, here's the deal. So the question is, the question comes up, if you take the liver of a cat and you feed it to a dog, the dog's liver gets better. And why? Why does that happen? So the researchers of the 1880s and the 1890s were trying to figure out why. If you take that cat liver and you burn it to an ash and you feed it to the dog, it still works. There's something in that liver that can go up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it's, it doesn't break down and it still works to heal the, heal the liver up. So it's been discovered by Royal Lee in the 1930s that the protomorphogen, what that nutrient is, is actually a mineral substrate. So it's not necessarily um, a living, or, uh, living tissue. It's, a, it's like a rock. It's not a rock, but it's like a, it's a mineral with a structure to it. And once you go above 500 degrees um, Fahrenheit, then it'll break down and it's not usable by the body. So that's, um, that nutrient then affects how our cells grow, the replication of DNA, and it does other things, I'm not gonna get into it, but it's a whole new, it's a whole different way of looking at um, eating organs to fix your organs, okay? So Royal Lee, had this theory in the 1930s, and he studied the guys earlier in the 1890s. He studied what they were doing, and he continued that research in the 1930s. He wrote a book, right here, it's called Protomorphology, and then in the 1950s, he developed and built machines that could actually make these nutritional supplements with the, the protomorphogens, and they've been working well ever since, and they do what they're supposed to do. Okay, now a little caveat here regarding the history of nutritional research. So all these great thinkers and researchers and scientists were working on nutrition um, in the late 1800s and then something happened in 1912 that changed the course of the research. What happened was the first synthetic vitamin was made in the lab. And that's vitamin B1, uh, uh, Dr. Funk was his name, and all these researchers said, oh, money, let's make more synthetic B vitamins and other 
synthetic vitamins and we can make a lot of money. And Royal Lee did not go that route. He continued the natural route. He was very ethical and his purpose in life was to help people with their health and improve the state, status of our, our, of our society. So um, synthetic vitamin B1 was quickly discovered to make the heart get bigger and then lose its muscular tone and then start skipping beats and then it would stop. So in high doses, and that just happens with synthetic vitamins, if you do high doses and there's uh, imbalances, and you know, it's just chemicals from a, from a chemistry lab, that's what it is. It's missing all the other uh, components that go with that B vitamin, uh, with that vitamin B1. There's also vitamin B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, all the way up. So you can't just take vitamin B1, you got to take all the vi B vitamins together so that you have, so your body's not overloaded with some chemical, it's got all of them put together. So I just want to address this because um, some people are kind of freaked out by this, but hey, that's just how it goes. And I'm not the authority on it, it's Mother Nature, Mother Nature is the authority on it. And look back at our ancestors, you know, 200 years ago, a thousand years ago. They would kill a pig, roast it, and they ate all of it. They ate the eyes, the brain, all the organs inside. The muscle, the muscle meat like this, that could be given to the dogs because it wasn't as important um, for, for humans. And this muscle meat was also stored for the winter. So they would salt it or they would smoke it and they would eat that during the wintertime. Um, the brain actually was uh, um, in the... Um, what's it called? Head cheese. So the original head cheese had brain parts in it. And you can buy head cheese now, but it's, there's no brain parts in it. That's been taken out of our, out of our, uh, our food. So um, we do have supplements with brain in it. And it can, not from cow because of the mad cow scare. It's from pig. So it's safe to eat. There's no mad cow scare in the, in the pig nutrients. All right, so there you go. There's that discussion on that.